Now, I'm so pleased to be joined by Gerda Verberg, who is the coordinator of the Sun Movement. Gerda, thank you so much for being here with us today. It's my pleasure. I really love talking with you because you're so passionate about what you do and you are so great at bringing people together on this agenda. And I think that's one of the advantages of the Sun Movement is your convening power on these issues. So how I'd love to hear a little bit about how you're using your network, the Sun Movement model and structure to engage countries around the Food Systems Summit and around this reform agenda. Yes, I'm extremely happy to um, that the, the Food Systems Summit is organized because um, we have learned now that the models of uh, food production we used until today will not nourish the future. And to do so, we need to have a country by country approach where countries look at their current uh, food production system and ask themselves how can we produce in a more a nutritious way, more, more diverse way, and how can we produce and consume in a more planet-friendly planet way. So it's both focused on people and on a, a planet, planet. And that is what I like and embrace, embrace very much. It's not anymore the global models that are uh, fit for country. It is people in countries coming together and look at the food systems, from farming to consumption and everything that is in between uh, uh, with the ask, how can we make this better to serve people's needs and to serve uh, the need of our planet. So I'm excited and I'm, uh, we are working on it with our 64 member countries to uh, bring the people at the country level uh, together to make sure that the government is leading, because that is what, what needs to happen, but also to make sure that all stakeholders are around the table, including smallholder farmers, women, and young people. Nobody can be left out uh, from this table. And one of the things that we've talked about for years, sort of in the nutrition space specifically, is how nutrition has been siloed in some senses. How has this summit process helped break down some of those silos and help actors that maybe didn't always see themselves as having to do with nutrition or other aspects of the food system realize that everyone really must be working together if reform is actually going to happen? Yeah. I think this food system, uh, food system summit has brought uh, good opportunities. Uh, first of all, nutrition was considered as an as an a health issue, and it's of course a health issue, but it's also a well-being issue and an economic and social issue. So instead of thinking of uh, supporting only malnourished children, women, uh, people, etc. Uh, the focus is now on prevention and everybody knows that um, food and good food and healthy food is the best prevention and the best investment uh, for children, not only in the first thousand days of their life, but also throughout uh, their whole lifespan. It is nourishing the body, but it's also supporting the cognitive development and using the brains in a smart way. So that is one thing. The other uh, point is that until now, too many decision makers are thinking in food security, meaning thinking of uh, calories only. And they think that if the uh, when the, uh, the belly is uh, uh, filled, um, the biggest part is done and then only you have this part of nutrition, but it's coming as a second step and maybe is a luxury. Now, uh, people start to realize, no, it's not about calories, it's about the nutrition, the, the diversity, the vitamins, the minerals, uh, and all these, uh, these uh, micronutrients that people uh, need. So this is, the food system is really a blessing in disguise, um, because the third thing is that when it comes to the sustainable development goals, the different players from health, from agriculture, from environment, from climate, from energy, from the private sector, from social protection, need to come together because if we are able to get our food systems right, it will be a catalyst uh, for all uh, 17 sustainable development goals. And we are right now already in the decade uh, of delivery because nine years to go to 2030. 
And of course, uh, the Sun Movement is focused not only on the summit this year, but also the Nutrition for Growth event coming up in December. Tell us a little bit about the connections you want to see between these two events and how you want momentum to continue into the Nutrition for Growth uh, yeah. event in December. Yeah. We always start thinking from a country perspective. And what we have noticed is that many uh, in-country people are still thinking about how to build uh, forward better or how to build uh, uh, back better from the COVID crisis. So we were able to combine the implementation of our new strategy, Sun 3.0, with the Building Forward Better agenda, with the Food System Summit uh, agenda and the N4G agenda. So we have four in one because some countries uh, don't like to have all these separate uh, uh, agendas. And overarching, we call it the uh, year of action on uh, nutrition. So our focus is on nutrition, but of course we understand that you need to include in the Food System Summit the planetary sustainability, and that is a win-win, because if farmers can produce in a more sustainable way, they have more a better yield and they have a better income, and that's also supporting their uh, uh, nutrition and their uh, potential progress. Um, and we have said, all right, we will focus on commitment making per country, both in the Food System Summit and in the N4G, whereby N4G will make it possible to um, uh, step a little bit further when it comes to nutrition inclusion in the universal health coverage, when it comes to, art to articulation of um, nutrition in the food systems, when it comes to financial commitments and all these kind of things. So. Um, uh, the N4G should really be a next step forward, but building on the results of the food systems, whereby not only public um, uh, uh, public authorities or public groups, but also the private sector should make clear and uh, measurable commitments. And I think that's the key, right, is clear and measurable, and then sort of how, how we do actually find ourselves measuring them and how we decide, um, you know, what success might look like. How are you as the Sun Movement thinking about, you know, not only the actual commitment making, people making announcements at these events of what they intend to do, but how you intend to work with countries, with other stakeholders, private sector, beyond to make sure that they're actually following through and delivering on these commitments that they've made? Day in, day out, we are working on um, uh, making the commitments connect it to what it has to happen at country level. We have learned from uh, history or from previous experiences that um, you can make uh, very general commitments that nobody can measure. Now we say, all right, please focus, make them measurable, have clear targets so that we can measure and praise you if you are doing uh, uh, very well, the naming and faming, but also if, that we can encourage you if you are not delivering or see what is wrong. And in the end, if you don't do nothing, we need to, uh, sorry, but we have to, to name and shame you. And this is encouraging because we have learned in our countries that success, making progress, is, be, is um, breeding more progress. And that is what we are looking at. So right now, we are active at the global level, but working closely with countries uh, to get nutrition well positioned, in, but also the gender and youth issues, sometimes underestimated in the, the whole food systems uh, and nutrition dialogue, um, but also to bring global commitments to countries. What does it mean at the country level? How can governments uh, step up and trust uh, these commitments? How can they work and make use of the solutions that are developed uh, there? So every solution should be applicable at the country level and every technical and innovative solution should be applicable at the very remote area uh, by farmers, by communities, but also by women, because we see when it comes to technology and to other access, uh, women are um, left further behind. 
Well, unfortunately, we are out of time, um, but I really look forward to chatting with you again, Gerda, as we move through this year and, you know, tracking all of these things that we've just discussed and um, seeing how, you know, commitments themselves are made as well as followed through on. So thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate your time and I look forward to chatting with you again soon. Thank you very much, Sarita. Promise me one thing. Um, don't let it uh, uh, take another one and a half year before we uh, meet again. I will do my best. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. All the best.